Uh, yeah, many thanks for the wonderful introduction. I was just now given by Richard Reisel. I feel very honored. And at the same time, I'm feeling a bit embarrassed that I can only speak to you in English language, but I hope that will be OK with all of you. So my name is Josef Strobel. And besides chairing my department at the University of Salzburg, my main responsibility and the reason for my virtual presence today is being the head of the UNIGIS International Association. And I'm very glad to see that this uh, current event, where you're all coming together in a real as well as in a virtual world, uh, is getting off to a very good start. And I wish that the main objective, creating, supporting, and validating a very strong community around SIC and GIS in Latin America and in Brazil in particular will be met with lots of success. We will be very happy to work together with the Foramundo organizers to making this a success and all of our support will be available now as it has been in the past. Let me just share a few thoughts. A few thoughts starting from the observation that geographic information systems and geoinformatics usually are motivated by the needs from different domains, from different domains, or sometimes we call them application disciplines. The common denominator of these sometimes very different and disparate domains and disciplines actually is the world, is the globe, it is our world, it is our world we need to manage properly. And I'm looking at GIS from this perspective. From this perspective, which shows the real world on the left-hand side, of course, we know there is the world of the natural, of the physical environment, as well as the built environment, the social and cultural world. And we need to keep in mind that for those two worlds of the natural, original, physical environment and the built and social fabric, we only have one globe. So we do not have two globes, but just one. So there is a lot of coordination and management tasks to be fulfilled. Many or most of these management tasks in different scales, in local, regional, continental, as well as global scales, cannot be tried out, they cannot be tested, they cannot just be implemented in the real world. And because it would be sometimes take too long, be too expensive or not ethical to do those tests on the real world, we are using a virtual model, a digital representation of the real world. Our geospatial data models, uh, the data models we fill with observations from different kinds of sensors, are a valid and often very powerful representation of the real world. Here, in this digital sandbox, we can try to support our decisions. We can run these models. We can develop scenarios. We can answer what if questions. And by the way, I like to refer to GIS as a what-if technology, as a brief as possible definition. And then, of course, we want to go back to the real world and implement what we have learned in our models. This concept, conceptual view of GIS as a virtual representation of the real world is valid for all application domains, whether we are looking at logistics, at mining or other natural resources, agricultural production, or managing our social and urban environments. And in this technology environment, we are subject to continuous changes. Things are changing all the time. When we started in Salzburg some 25 or more years ago with GIS, then of course the technologies and all the tools and methods available were completely different. Many of us were growing up in GIS. 
with the definition that GIS is built from hardware, software, data, organization, and whatever is in people's minds, what people bring to it as qualifications. Today we are moving very rapidly away from our desktops. And right now we are developing uh, learning media as well as operational GIS projects where hardware, software, and data are increasingly becoming transparent. Transparent in the way that all of those three, so computing resources, software technology, as well as the digital data representations of the real world are all managed in the cloud, are all transparent on the internet. It's just like we are all used to go to our email services. We log on on any browser, on any machine in order to use email as a cloud service. The same is right now happening with GIS. So right now, we only have two different components. It's the, what I like to call the techware, which is available online, all of this, and what happens in our minds. And increasingly, this brainware is having a hard time in keeping up what technology and methodology are offering to us. So this, I believe, is one of the reasons why we are coming together in Foromundo and in many other venues, just to learn with each other, to learn from each other, and to enhance our own capacities, our friends' and colleagues' capacities, to bring strong qualifications to strong and solid decisions we are making with GS. Again, getting back to my own department here at the University of Salzburg, as I mentioned, it not only has a long history, but we have a very long history of collaborating with our colleagues in various parts of the world, not the least of these in Latin America. One of the key uh, avenues we are following, one of our main objectives we are looking at is the capacity building objective. Like I mentioned before, it's typically considered as the bottleneck to a more successful application and implementation of geographic information science and technologies in the real world across a broad range of different application disciplines. And I'm confident that the success story of UNIGIS in Latin America which has evolved to a very high standard of quality over the last couple of years, will not only continue, but it will continue to be the benchmark for everyone else, to be the leading program helping and being responsible for highly qualified professionals in the area of chess across all of Latin America and beyond. Of course, in my own university, we can combine this with residential study programs, and we have experience with a range of international programs, and I'm always very happy to enter into collaborative projects, into agreements where we exchange students, and where hopefully we in the future as well will be able to set up projects where scholarships will be available for students and graduates to study in Europe, to study at the University of Salzburg. And of course, I'm particularly proud of the Foromundo brand as it has been established, as it's getting off to a good start in Rio de Janeiro right now, simply because many years ago we started this initiative in Europe, in Austria, and it's not only the color scheme of our conference offerings we share and have in common, but much more importantly, it's the spirit of community development, of building a community of practice with a focus on GIS and geoinformatics. I wish you all lots of success with what you have started today. And I'm looking forward to staying in touch, staying in contact in the near and in the more distant future. So we are all at the roots of continuing the development of the information society and contributing to make it not only an information, but a geo-information society, which to me is one of the more interesting 
uh, reasons why we use the GIS acronym. It can easily translate or be translated into the geo information society being essentially and ultimately much more important than a mere systems approach. Again, with this, I'm glad that we had the opportunity and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share a couple of minutes and a few thoughts with you and I wish to everyone a great continuation of today's meeting. Lots of success and looking forward in the future to meeting again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Josef. Uh, we had your voice and your message very clear here uh, in the auditorium that we are sharing at the UERSHI and organized by uh, our colleagues, Rui and uh, Jose Agosto, and we will just uh, clap our hands and thank you for having been with us. <laughs>